Next is The Imposter, directed by Bart Layton. This is one of those documentaries that is a great example of truth being stranger than fiction, and you're just wondering how that could have even happened. Without giving too much away, it's about a French con man who impersonated a young American boy that disappeared at the age of 13, and if that already sounds ridiculous, wait until you watch the entire film. The other aspect that's great about this film is the directing. Instead of giving you just the standard side-on shots used for every person that's interviewed, the camera makes you look down the eyes of only the con man as he's telling you his side of the story, whereas everyone else is just on an angle. It's a smart way of putting you in the same position that everyone else would have been as the con man was lying to them and it cleverly helps you gauge why they may have believed him. Nobody ever gave a damn about me and to know that if I change my identity, the reward was eventually to be put in a place where actually they really cared about me and hell yeah, I mean, I was reborn, <laughs> I was born again. Next is I Love You, Now Die, directed by Aaron Lee Carr. A documentary that examines a fascinating legal case about the prosecution of a girl who was involved with her boyfriend's suicide. After it was discovered, she appeared to be encouraging him to do so via several texts and phone calls. I really love this film purely just because of the case and less about its presentation, although that's not to say it isn't well made. The fact that technically it's not illegal to tell someone to go kill themselves and if they do, you're not liable for the death makes this whole situation really engrossing because it's almost the first for its kind and there's a lot of great complexity to the case that should make watching it with a group of friends even more entertaining because it opens opens up a discussion about what's right or wrong in the eyes of the law and what's right or wrong morally. I do wish we could see a lot more of just the messages that were sent rather than having people voice over what was occurring, but they literally sent thousands of texts so I can see why the film decided to summarize what was happening and make it more of an entertaining film spectacle rather than just a book that you would have to read. Still, this is an unbelievable case and I had a blast watching it unfold. She told him that once he was dead he would be free and happy. She pushed him to kill himself sooner rather than later and she used Conrad as a pawn in her sick game of life and death. Next is Samsara, directed by Ron Frickle. Now I'm only recommending this film with a preface that if you don't like films with little to no dialogue or any narrative, then stay away from this. This film is a collection of shots taken from around the world with a loose idea to show you how the world works in its rawest form. This is one of the most beautifully shot films I've ever seen and if you're a fan of the Planet Earth series then you'll probably love this as well. I love that it doesn't just show you shots of the wild, but there's also great shots of different cultures, industrial areas and people from all around the world. Be warned, this film is two hours long, but I for one was never bored because the images are just incredible. Next is An Honest Liar, directed by Justin Weinstein and Tyler Meeson. The film follows the life of James the Amazing Randy, who was a magician and an escape artist, but also a skeptical educator who publicly exposed many psychics, faith healers, and con artists. Like American Movie, this film is really carried by its lead subject matter, who's just such a charismatic and intelligent funny man. If you're a fan of people calling bullshit on people that prey on despair and hopes of other people, then this is the film for you. Uh, you have been touring our country debunking psychics, haven't you? I have indeed. And I think that the solution is rather simple. Now what I have here is particles of a white plastic which will rather conclusively show that Mr. Heydrich is merely blowing on both the page and on the pencil. James, ready. Next is American Animals, directed by Bart Lighton. Now this film is unique on this list in that it's presented like a fictional drama that retells or is based on a true story, but actually includes real life interviews with the people who were involved in that story. The true story in question revolves around the heist of a collection of very rare books from the University of Transylvania, one of which includes John James Audborn's The Birds of America and hence the name of the movie. This is the same director who did The Imposter and I think is one of the best documentarians working today, just based on how original and clever he is with his presentation, and American Animals is no exception. Oh, and don't look up anything on this because that'll only take away from the experience. Something I've often thought about is how my life would have been different if I hadn't met Warren. So this is the uh, dinosaur T-Rex trying to turn off a ceiling fan. Next is Maru, directed by Elizabeth Chai Vasilai and Jimmy Chin, who did Free Solo. While I don't think this challenge is as crazy nor is the film as great as Free Solo, Maru is still an impressive film from a guy who also has an interesting backstory into how and why he got into filmmaking. Essentially he left an office life and started taking photos of other rock climbers to the point where he began to get recognized for his work and eventually brought him to tackle the maroon climb. Again, the challenge they undertake is one thing, but it's really the characters of the film that makes it worthwhile. If you loved Free Solo, then chances are you'll like this as well. 
The thing that gives it the name, the shark's fin, is this 1,500-foot blade of this beautiful, flawless granite, way up high, you know, 20,000 feet. This is the test of the, the master climber. You know, it's been tried by so many great climbers, I don't know, 20 times. Some of the best climbers in the world have tried and failed on this route. Next is Tickle, directed by David Ferreira and Dylan Reeve. Remember how I mentioned truth can sometimes be stranger than fiction? Well, this film takes the cake for being the most ridiculous and weirdest story you'll ever see. I don't want to give too much away because how everything unravels is just insane, so I'll only say that it's about a mysterious tickling competition. But trust me, this film is great. It's hilarious, it's dark, and one of the most unpredictable documentaries I've ever watched. He discovered that while Jane O'Brien Media seemed to be operated out of America, it was owned by a company in Germany called Nita Dietzen, which owned nearly 300 domain names all related to tickling. Next is Hearts of Darkness, a filmmaker's apocalypse, directed by Fax Barr, George Hickenlooper and Eleanor Coppola. As hinted by the name, the film is a behind-the-scenes look at the making of Apocalypse Now by one of the director's husbands, Francis Ford Coppola. The great thing about this film is, again, you don't really need to know anything about the actual film that they were making in order to enjoy it, although it does give you a great appreciation knowing what it took to get that now classic movie made. If you thought Apocalypse Now gave an accurate picture of hell and war, then be sure that Hearts of Darkness goes even further to show you just how many production problems there were on the making of this film. The film literally nearly cost and ruined the life and career of its director, and Hearts of Darkness does a great job showing exactly why. My film is not uh, about Vietnam. It is Vietnam. It's what it was really like. It was crazy. Next is Jadarowski's Dune, directed by Frank Pavich. This is another documentary that takes a look at the making of a film, but with a twist in that it shows the behind the scenes of a film that was never made. Which might sound like a silly thing to do, but the film in question was the epic science fiction space opera Dune, based off the iconic book by the same name. And the writer-director in question is none other than Alejandro Jadarowski himself. Now I've already made one video about Jadarowski, but if you don't know who he is, then I can't recommend checking out his films enough. Essentially he's one of the most creative and eccentric directors who really doesn't consider himself a filmmaker, but more of a poet. And when you watch his films, you'll see what I mean. Jadarowski's Dune does a great job of bringing to life what his vision for the film could have been, but also includes some interesting interviews from other great artists involved with the project, like H.R. Grieger, who was the man responsible for the alien design. This film might be more appealing to those that are into filmmaking, but Jadarowski's persona is interesting enough that I think anyone should be able to enjoy watching his quirky mannerisms and passion for the film. Carradine came to my room, the first thing he saw was the, the pot of A vitamin. Oh, A vitamin! <laughs> And he drink all the all the all my pills of vitamin E, like a, it's a monstrosity. Uh, Sixty dollar was uh, he make. It. Well, was a big a big beginning. And then I say we need to work together. You are the person I am searching. Do you have any comment to make on that? Bob, the, the comment very briefly is that I have gone through many hundreds of these tests with many hundreds of people who claim to have psychic powers. And quite frankly, it's more or less the same story every time. When a simple, direct, very uncomplicated protocol is used and the control is applied, the psychic forces don't seem to be present, if indeed they are ever present at all. 